Hello everybody, Calamity here, and I make terrible guides, at least according to the comments. Today's video is going to be all about the Genshin Alive uh, special program, the 4.5 version. This is the version where Chiori is being added to the game. Uh, we are here to specifically check out her, uh, her kit, her skills, talents, all that stuff. And to share my thoughts on her, um, I just fast forwarded to the part where they start talking about her kit. If you do want to watch the special program uh, for yourself, I'll have like a link down in the comments or the description down below. So let's get started with Chiori. We're also going to take a look at the, uh, before I forget, there's some banner coming out that I was told that has character weapons in it. We're just going to have to take a look see for ourselves. But let's go ahead and look at Chiori. Conventional designer. She has a unique way of designing her clothes. Aside from using... Alright, so first of all, she's actually a dual-wielding character. This is our second dual-wielding character ever. We had Child or Tartaglia when he has his swords out or his like water daggers. But now we actually have a real dual-wielding character and that looks really awesome. Finally, to see some more different like fighting styles um, being added. Um, but I'm going to read what it says right here. It's called Fluttering Has Hasude. Uh, by tapping your elemental skill button, Chiori will dash forward and sweep her blade upward. At the same time, Chiori will summon the Automaton doll Tomato. And they will attack together. Dealing damage to opponents based on her attack and her defense. Wow, okay, double scaling. Hold the elemental skill button to adjust the dash direction. You probably won't have to do that too often. Uh, while Tomato is active, when you when Geo constructs exist or are created nearby, Chiori will summon an additional Tomato onto the field. So she's gonna work well with characters like Albedo, Zhongli. Uh, I believe Ningguang's uh, her screen, her Jade screen, that also counts as a Geo construct. So it looks like. We're getting yet another Geo character where they want you to add, uh, use like a mono Geo team uh, with her. Or at least that's what it looks like. Let's uh, let's keep watching. Her own blades to cut fabric. She also uses an automaton named Tamoto. Her longtime personal assistant like the is animations. always ready to help produce and model her designs. Tamoto is indispensable to how Chiori expresses her unique creative. Okay, I'm gonna be pausing a lot, so if that bothers you, I'm sorry. So I saw the tomato get summoned when she used her dash, but it didn't seem to do anything because it looked like she went, she pushed that treasure hoarder guy a little too far, and the tomato didn't do anything. Is that I don't know if that was intentional or what, um, but that didn't that didn't look like a good showcase. Vision to the world. It's like she has an aura that proclaims to everyone. This is fashion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Chiori's found an ingenious way to incorporate her design-making assistance into combat, too. During her elemental skill, Chiori summons Tamoto to attack her opponents. See, she also again. performs an upward strike and deals damage to her enemies based on her attack. They did it again! Here's, unless I'm missing the attacks or something. It's, am I reading it wrong? It says, uh, Tamoto... It says attack together. Where is... Am I not seeing the tomato's attack? And defense stats. Hmm. Wait, wait. She already made that automaton herself? Wow, oh, it's so intricate. Maybe she could expand into a new industry if she wanted. <laughs> For sure. When her elemental skill is held, Chiori can adjust the direction of her dash to attack enemies from multiple angles. Hey, Alhe the mains and Kaching mains. I hope you just realized that uh, because you can control her dash and aim it in the air, you can implement a plunge attack. So if her normal attacks end up being really good and something that you want to utilize. And as an experienced businesswoman, <laughs> Chiori knows how to capitalize on favorable conditions. Chiori will summon an additional automaton when Tomoto is active and there are other geo constructs. Oh, I'm seeing their attacks now on this on the robots because they're much closer and you can actually see the animation. There's like a little a line, right? That's their attacks. Let me go back just like a bit. So an additional automaton when Tomoto is active. You see that right there? That line? That's their attacks. 
not hers. And there are other geoconstructs on the field. Huh. Okay. By unlocking one of her specific right? talents, Chiori can trigger special effects when using her skill or normal attack during the upward strike on her elemental skill. Ooh, interesting. So it seems like you can even switch your active character by using her skill. <gasps> Whoa. Hey, 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 y'all didn't tell me this. That's actually kind of cool. You can change your character mid plunge, like in the middle of using her dash. So you can use the skill to get a free automaton. And then uh, here in this example, they swap to Navia, like almost, it almost looked like mid dash, but let me, uh, let me back it up a little bit. Okay. That's a little too far. Oh, interesting. So it seems like you can even switch. So yeah, she does her skill there and then immediately swaps to Navia. Which your active character by that's, using her skill. That's a cool uh -huh. playstyle. Her little assistant seems to save her a lot of trouble. Oh, absolutely. Chiori doesn't like to waste her time on um trivial matters. If someone tests her patience, then she'll end the battle with a strike as sharp and fierce as her personality. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> Chiori may be a professional designer, but she's also really fun to watch in combat. Oh, is it telling me what the burst is here? <laughs> Sorry, let's actually read it. After unlocking the talent Taylor made, Chiori will gain different effects depending on the next action you take within a short duration of using her elemental skill upward sweep. Tapping the elemental skill button again switches to the... N oh... Party placement is important. I thought you could swap to any character you wanted to during like a short window. Okay, so it's going to just automatically switch if you press the elemental skill button again. I got it. Okay. When your um when your active party member's normal charge or plunging attacks hit an opponent, the automaton doll will execute a coordinated attack. Tapping the normal attack button will cause Shiori to gain a geo infusion. Nice. For sure. Chiori doesn't think that fashion stops at appearances. It also needs to serve a functional purpose. Hmm. When Chiori is in your active party and any of your characters are wearing a unique outfit or a non-default wing glider, the whole team will have their movement speed increased. Hmm. Okay, so again, they just explained what her passive talent is here. And it's if your characters are not or are, are wearing a customized skin or a different wing glider, and this is to allow free-to-play players to take advantage of this effect, they will get a movement speed increase. So that's that's nice. I mean, it's something different. So I'll give it that. Um, it, I guess a little bit nice for traveling if you don't have, like, you know, like a Kazuha or a Cloud Retainer, stuff like that, but <laughs> it's cute. That's what makes her a true designer. Our travels will definitely be smoother when she's in the party and more fashionable. Uh, well, maybe. All right, that looks like that's all they're gonna talk about for Chiori. Uh, initial thoughts is that you know again they don't show the damage numbers in these sorts of uh, character uh, showcases, which is fine. We'll you know we'll take a look sees when she's out in the next update. Um, but I do like her. Play style, her fighting style, again, the dual swords is very nice. Being able to actually incorporate more Geo characters, again, this is giving Albedo another, like, sort of usage. I, I don't know why they didn't use him here. Um, Ning Guang also would have been another character I think they could have used with her, as well as they did showcase Zhongli. They also used Navia as well, which you definitely could use with her if you want, but uh, Navia doesn't construct any... She doesn't have any geo constructs, so she wouldn't be able to make a tomato or a t the little automaton doll uh, thing with Shiori. Um, the only thing I couldn't notice was the doll's like attacks at first. I had to like really look for like an attack because I thought they would be like you know like um, like Jean Ling's Guoba where it, like does some like noticeable attack or something or like Yao Yao's um, bunny things or whatever. I like the character. Unfortunately, I am going to have to skip her. And it, again, it's not because I don't like her or anything like that. I do. I am just low on gems. And I don't know who's coming in on the update after this one. 4.6. I 
So if there's anyone, you know, that I really want, like Clorind or the other Fatui Harbinger that we met in Fontaine that could also be a playable character, like, I, I, you know, I'm sorry to Chiori here, but I'm, I'm going to be pulling for those characters instead. Uh, let's go ahead and skip a little bit. So she is gonna, Chiori's going to have a little bit of a story quest. Right. So the banners are Chiori or Arataki Ito. I think that's messed up to put him next to her. Because, of course, more people are going to go for Chiori, right? Like, everyone's going to go for the new fancy character, right? And, you know, I'm going to assume her numbers are going to be as impressive as Navia's uh, once she's out. But we'll have to wait and see. Arataki Ito, though, uh, if you are a new player and, you know, you, this is your first time seeing him and you don't know who to choose, Arataki Ito is going to be, the, I guess, the safer choice, at least for now, until we until we uh, see or get to try out Chiori. But, oh boy, second half. Wowie, wow. Those are some very solid characters. I'm going to tell you right now, if you are a new player and for some reason you caught my, you found my channel while starting your Genshin adventures, I'm telling you this right now, get both of these characters. Get both of them. Not one or the other. If you want an easy time playing this game and you want some of the strongest characters in the game, Oyoverse is giving both of them to you on a silver platter in phase two. Now, obviously, you might not have enough gems to pull for both of them, depending on your, you know, how much you have saved up and your, your RNG and stuff like that. But holy moly, if you can get Nuvolet. If you had to choose one of these, though, get Nuvolet because he is just an insanely strong DPS and can destroy everything in this game. Yeah, Muvalet for sure. As long as they're not hydroimmune, you're solid. All right, let's move on to the more controversial quote unquote part of the update, which is supposed to be this type of wish, um, the chronicled wish. This. Uh, what's that? Yeah. Right. So looky looky what we have here. We have, we have a new event wish. Is this like, hang on, I'm a little confused here. Uh, I'm gonna let them see if they're gonna explain it a bit uh, in the let video. Let me explain. A new type of banner will be available starting from version 4.5, the Chronicled Wish. The okay. Chronicled Wish banner will allow travelers to obtain a variety of characters such as Klee and Dilu. Nice. They'll oh. also be able to obtain weapons such as Hunter's Path, and Wolf's Gravestone. Whoa. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, that's cool. Very cool. Super cool. Wait, if so many characters and weapons are going to be on the same banner, won't it be kind of hard to pull for exactly who you want or what you want? Nope. You can chart a specific course for the character or weapon that you want. Plus... Pause. We have to talk about what he just said. He said, on this banner, you can choose a five-star character or a five-star weapon. Why is it not? And wouldn't you want to pull? I don't know if these, if this, like, is this all in one banner? Like all these weapons and characters? Cause if so, why are three of them characters we can already get on the standard banner? Like, I don't mind Eula, Klee, Albedo being on here. In fact, add some of the more like Characters that have that have had like a ton of reruns by now. You could have added Venti on here instead of Jean, in my opinion, or you know other. You could add John Lee, uh, Zhang Lee, excuse me, as well. But why why not both? Why can't you chart a five star character and a five star weapon? Wouldn't you wouldn't you want to get the character and then their weapon? So would you have to do 180 pulls to get their character? Get well. At the worst case scenario, you'd have to do 180 pulls to get the character you want, and then you'd have to get 180 pulls again to get the weapon you want. This is, this is like worst, worst RNG case scenario, unless you get, you know, you get really lucky, you get your five star early, um, etc. But concept of this banner is cool. I just, I just don't like the fact that there's standard characters in it. Same with the weapons. Like you have Skyward Pride, Wolf's Gravestone, Lost Prayer, Skyward. Like these are all standard weapons. Now, getting a Beacon of the Reed Sea and a Hunter's Path, though, that's really, really good. These two weapons, for those that don't know, Beacon of the Reed Sea and Hunter's Path are Dia and Tinari's signature weapons when they both had a limited banner, which Tinari has not been 
in the limited banner since the debut of Sumeru, which was like over a year ago now. We have had no way to get the Hunter's Path, so it, it is very nice to see that weapon again. Same with Beacon of the Reed Sea. Both of those weapons are really, really good. Um, Song of Broken Pines also going to be good for Eula, but as well as any physical Claymore DPS, so Fremenae, uh, Razor, if you're building them as physical DPS, all going to be great options there. What they should do instead instead is just add these characters to the standard banner would be my opinion on this but i guess this is a way to do it i'm gonna go ahead and guess that this is gonna need intertwined fates and not the standard banner pulls as, as well which is yes, it only takes a maximum uh, of one fate point to guarantee your target oh, okay so he just cleared this up you only need one fate point to guarantee your target which means it's still 180 pulls at the worst uh rng as i said earlier so you know you Pull on the banner, hoping you get your character or your weapon, and then if you don't get it uh, in that, you essentially lose your 50-50. Then the next time you pull a 5-star, it will be either the weapon or the character that you chose uh, on this banner. So I, I guess it's a step in the right direction, but they could do more in my opinion. You're also guaranteed an item that matches your target type. For example, if your target... Wait, you can pick a target type? Targeting a specific five-star character, whatever you end up pulling is guaranteed to be what? a character. Oh. oh, okay. So he was just saying if you're, if you pick on the path, like if you pick, let's say, Deluc, or sorry, let's say you pick Klee as the character that you wanted. Anytime you get a five-star on the banner as you're pulling it, you're you're going to get a character. Like it's not going to be, is it going to be a character or a weapon? No, it's going to be a character. So... Keep that in mind if you only want if you're only interested in the weapons then pick a five star weapon and then if you're only interested in the characters pick a character it, it is that simple i thought there was more to it the same is true for it. weapon pulls that's okay. neat seems like a great opportunity for travelers to make up for missing out on certain characters and weapons that they wanted yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah there's one thing that i have to clarify Oh. These new banners will only feature five-star characters that have had at least three character event wishes and have not appeared on any recent banners. Mm. All right, so they just stated that these banners are going to be a continuing thing in Genshin and that feature banners of these types are going to include characters that have not had a rerun in a long time. So as you can see, Klee, Eula, Albedo fit that option. However, Mona, Deluc, and Jean, again... I don't think they should be here, in my opinion. Like, I understand there's some of you out there that are going to be like, yo, Panda or Calamity. It, that's not fair, you know? I've been playing this game for three years, and I still don't have Mona, or I still don't have Deluc. Like, I've, I've seen those comments, and I understand, hey, this is a great way to finally get those characters, but I'd rather this focus more on just, like, limited characters. My solution would have been just to add all, all of this, just put it on the standard banner. Put... Song of Broken Pines on there, Beacon of the Reed Sea, uh, and the Hunter's Path, and all these characters. Just put them all in there. You know what I mean? Just it it would make the standard banner exciting to pull on again. There, I moved. Okay, so I'm not blocking Sucrose anymore. Uh, so Sucrose just talked about how they're adding the new traveler guides uh, in a future update. I don't know if it's gonna be like the exact next update, but basically. Hoyoverse is replacing my job as a content creator for Genshin. Uh, basically, they're going to introduce guides for every character now. Like, full-on guides. Basically, what I do in my videos, they're going to do in the game for you for free. So you have constant access to it. So um, if you're wondering why I haven't been really putting out, you know, guides out lately, for Genshin at least, it's because, well, you're going to have access to what I talk about, you know, in your game. Uh, these little guides are going to have weapon recommendations. There's already artifact recommendation and main stat recommendations in the game already. So all they need to do is just add like a, hey, upgrade these talents. Here are some weapon options for the character. Here are some teams that they're used in. And off you go. Like, that, it's literally what I do in in a short in-game convenience guide for you. So uh, <laughs> I'm out of the job, I guess. Alright, I will be skipping the rest of the special program because that's just where they talk about events um, for the game. And it looks like we are going to be getting yet another free event weapon. So I, at least I can make a guide on that. Um, and the rest I usually skip because, you know, it's just 
small stuff that I, I'm, I only like focus on like characters and and some of the banner stuff I like to discuss. So that's going to be it for me and my reaction to the 4.5 special program. Are you guys excited for the next update? Um, for me, uh, not really, just because there's not a lot of characters. A lot, like, there's not a lot of new characters, there's just one. And, you know, I'm still saving up for any future characters. Um, and, you know, I'm always excited for new story stuff, but it doesn't look like that's going to be happening in this event or update either. So probably around 4.6, maybe we can... Um, Pick up where the story left off, you know, a little bit, hopefully. But until then, thank you guys so much for checking out the video. Uh, if you like this kind of content, feel free to leave a like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below if you're excited about the new update, or if you're not, kind of curious to see what y'all think. And I'll see you guys in the next video.